Hey everyone, welcome back to Dave's Small Engines. If you guys recall this chainsaw, the Steel 026. This saw's in fantastic shape. It actually belongs to a friend of mine. He's an older gentleman, and let's face it guys, none of us are getting any younger. I know, tough to come to grips with, but if I can make this chainsaw, the Steel 026, a little bit easier for him to use as he gets older, I think it's totally worth it. Now there are saws out there that have easy start functionality. It's got a big kind of bulb that sits on the side. It's a spring that winds up as you pull it over. I'm sure you could go and buy one, but I don't think you get the same kind of quality that you do out of this 026. Potentially one of the best saws ever made by Still. Now if you were to buy the MS260, the newer variant of this saw, or even the 261 that I have over here, it has a decompression valve. Makes it easier to pull over. And maybe you don't need it. Maybe this video doesn't apply to you, but as I said, as we get older, or if you get injured, reefing on a pull cord, especially if things aren't tuned perfectly, eventually takes its toll on you. If I can add an MS260 piston and cylinder combination to this chainsaw, I might very well be able to allow my friend a few more years of use out of his chainsaw. One of the general rules that I have in my head is, if you can't start it, you probably shouldn't be using it. Now, I can, I can see that, I can see that perspective. However, just because you can't rip a cord like this doesn't mean that you're not solid and stable at this plane. Now, I went and saw my, my good friend, Don, Donnyboy73, you guys all know his channel. If you don't, go check it out. 12, over 1,200 videos, just incredible work. He had an old MS-260, piston and cylinder. Something, something went wrong in the bottom end, but the top end, the piston and cylinder, were mint. I'm going to attempt to put that MS-260 piston and cylinder on this 026, to allow my friend a bunch more years of cutting. So I just wanted to show you guys a selection of the saws that I currently have. This is my 026. As you can see, no decompression valve. This is the 026 I'm going to be working on that belongs to my friend. Also no decompression valve. However, you will notice that these two top cases here seems like they have a spot for a decompression valve. This is my MS260. Oh. What do you know? Has a decompression valve right there. Then of course, the MS261C with the M-Tronic carburetor, probably my favorite saw, even though it's blown up. I'm sure you guys saw the video over on Don's channel, uh, DonnyBoy73. Um, it has the decompression valve here as well. Now, what do all three of these saws have in common? They're all blown up and I have to fix them. That's pretty much it. All right, so this is the cylinder that I picked up from Donnie Boy 73 Look at that. Fantastic. I'm just trying to get the light in there so you can see how nice this cylinder is. No scoring. I mean, yeah, there's some heat marks and stuff, but it is a used cylinder, but there's no scoring. And it looks great now. That's impressive. Check this out. This is the piston. I mean, aside from the grease marks, looks like it's in fantastic shape. So, barring any unforeseen circumstances where this cylinder doesn't mate down onto this saw, I think it should work just fine. Let's see what we can do. Step number one. Take the top cover case off. I guess it's a cover, not a case. Boom, access. Now, as you guys can see here, and I'm sure you'll yell at me later on, if I don't clean this up, I could be in trouble. So let's uh, take the muffler off, get some more room here, maybe take the bar off, the handlebar, and uh, see if we can get some better access and clean this this mess up. Start laying the parts out nicely, nice and organized. Yeah, 
definitely need to clean this up. Chain is nice and sharp. He's done a good job sharpening that chain. Set this aside. Yep. Gonna hit that with the air compressor. My favorite tool, the Irwin T27 on my DeWalt Impact. Makes quick work of that, doesn't it? These two are shorter for the bottom. The top are always longer. Get her handle off there. And then, yeah, should I take the brake off? Well, let's see if we can do it without that on there. I'm going to pop the muffler off here quick. I know we've covered that already, but And then we can get the, yeah, you know what? I better hit that with the air compressor before I fully take the muffler off because I don't, don't want any of those shavings or anything to get down into the exhaust port. Okay, so that's much cleaner now. Obviously I can't get at everything here with the saw the way it is, but we certainly got a lot of the, the crud off. So I'm gonna pop the muffler off now. Again, there's that burnt up, that burnt up cylinder you can see there. All right, so as you can see by my hand here, I took the air compressor to this, and it's you know one small wipe down away from ready to be disassembled. All right, so let's get ourselves some access here to the spark plug. Should be able to get our wrench in here, no problem now. Should come out by fingers, nice and easily. Ooh, check that out. Nice and lean. That's another indicator. The, the lighter it is, so you can see it's almost white there, a light shade of gray. That indicates that uh, this saw was run lean. Only thing separating us from removing this cylinder now is these four bolts, obviously, and then right down in here, you can see that shiny flathead right there. That is the clamp for the intake boot. Personally, I like using an impact with the T27 to take things off. Not the case for putting them back on. You don't want to strip them. But if you do strip one, I have a video on how to repair that. I can put the link below. to make sure the bit is seated down inside the bolt before I hit it with the impact. I don't want to strip anything. Here it comes. It's got to kind of work it. You don't want to tear that boot or else you're into a further repair. So let's see what we've got. Gasket still here. That's good. We're going to want to replace that, but you know what? Maybe this one might be okay. I always like to replace them. Okay, as you can see there, look at that port. It's a bit dicey right there. A little score, that's the intake side. Not that bad there. Not what we want to see on the exhaust side though. And of course, the moment of truth. The exhaust side of this piston. Wow. 
can hear that probably. Very rough as you run your fingernail across it. I mean, the rings are still free, so it might have had a bit of compression, but as you can see, that's totally scored and needs to be replaced. All right, so we've got it all cleaned up there. Use the air compressor, plugged everything up. Now it's ready for replacement of the piston and installation of the new cylinder. So before we do that, I wanted to show you guys these two cylinders side by side. Both marked steel. These are identical, save one detail. The decompression valve. So this is the 026 on the left and this is the MS260 on the right. They are identical. There's no difference except this isn't cut out and it doesn't have the decompression valve threaded in. That's the only difference between these two cylinders. Okay, so now that we're all cleaned up here, our next step is going to be removing the piston. So there's two circlips on either side here. Get yourself, get yourself a nice little flathead here and it pops those out nice and easy. Now, one of the tricks that I've learned over time is to only undo one of the circlips. So that, I guess when you're replacing it, if you were to use the same piston, you could just pop one side out and not have to worry about putting that back together. The fact of the matter in this case is we're replacing this piston in entirety, so it doesn't much matter, but I'll still show you what I mean by that. I then take a extension that fits past the circlip, but into the wrist pin. And then it's just some easy tapping. Talking super gentle here. And then as you can see, it starts to pop out the top of the screen, but actually out the side of the piston. This is really gentle. It does not take much force whatsoever. And then I like to leave it in as much as I can for it to still pop off. There it is. That's the exhaust side. As you can see, more damage on this side. You can hear how rough that is. And the intake side. Now, the intake side is interesting because it's got a couple of huge grooves like that. If you guys know exactly what would create that sort of situation, let me know in the comments. I've never seen it to be that distinct on the intake side. Now, one of the tricks my lovely commenters have told me about is just actually lubricating up these rings, making it easier for them to seat back in and also easier to compress when we put the cylinder back on. So once this is all cleaned up again, you can see the arrow on this piston that faces always to the exhaust. So out the front of the chainsaw, this is how we will orient the saw. And as you can see, there is still a circlip here. So all I have to do is replace it with the one from this piston on this side, once the wrist pin moves all the way through the connecting rod. We can use that same technique to press the wrist pin back in. However, we need to be very careful here. We're not talking a lot of force whatsoever. What we don't want to do is bend the connecting rod. Not good. There we are there. Now we have enough room to set the circlip in that groove. Here we are. Now we want to make sure 
that it's absolutely seated in there. The last thing you want is that for that circle clip to pop out on either side. Let's check this side too. For it to pop out on either side, wrist pin comes out, saw self-destructs, not what we're after. Okay, next up, let's make sure our gas gets on. Then we can put the cylinder back on. This part can be tricky. We need to make sure that this top ring is compressed first and then slide the cylinder down onto it and then that the bottom ring is then compressed as well. So it can be kind of tricky. Um, trickier here, I haven't done any my, myself any favors by not removing this bar, but let's see if we can do it without um, having too much of an issue. All right, so the first ring is in. Now, time for the second. Okay, now that the cylinder is down over both of the rings, we can put the intake boot back on. It's a bit of a dance. You see we've got it hooked on the bottom. There go, see that right there. Okay, now we have the Intake boot on, it's kind of hard to see there guys, but it's on. Then I just have to tighten this clamp around it. I want to make sure that's tight. Now, I'm not going to do these tight, obviously. I just want to make sure everything's set in. And that the gasket is aligned. Of course, the rear, I've got these two head bolts as well. I find it easiest to use a pair of needle nose pliers to get down in there. Tightening anything with the impact, but we are setting ourselves up for the win. Now this one's tricky. You got to go kind of down and in. So I set it up like this. Get your fat finger in there. There it goes. And it drops itself down. see down in there not a lot of light we're not doing these tight with the impact guys you see I'm backing them off a bit as well the reason is I want to do these all by hand Make sure that's attached and then if we've done everything properly that's the noise you want to hear for good measure squirt some lubricant in help those rings so far so good and of course then we want to tighten these in a star pattern not too tight in the first round I believe it's 11, 
foot pounds on these. And of course, this is 25 year old aluminum. You don't want to strip it out. Make sure they're all snug. And of course, make sure you hear the sound of success. Let's put it back together. Okay, so we have the muffler next. I like to use two Torx bits and I'll show you why. If you set one in here, you can align the gasket on the side and then the same thing with the other side. Okay, so for the front muffler plate, it has to hook underneath this edge. See that edge there? It's got a hook underneath there. And then of course, it's just the two T27 bolts here and here. Fresh spark plug installed. Now when you first install a spark plug, there's a bit of a crush on the crush washer. That's to be expected. So when you're tightening it, it feel it'll feel like it's stripping, but it's not actually, it's just crushing that washer. you'll feel it go tight to the cylinder just like that. Okay, let's put the handle back on now. Now you can use an impact for this if you know what you're doing. What you don't want to do is go too far or strip anything out. I know how my impact acts as I've used it for almost a year now consecutively. I know that I'm not going to be over tightening anything by using the impact. Of course, I'll then go over it with the with the hand ratchet just to make sure that it's to the tightness that I want. Yeah, so that really doesn't do it all that tight, which is great to know how your impact acts. All right, so let's try out this top cover or top plastic casing now that we don't need this plug in the way. Let's see if it fits. Wow, it's like it was almost meant to be. So this 026 now has an MS260 piston and cylinder, and with that, the decompression valve. Pretty awesome. That's great. Let's get the back air cover casing on.
Okay, so now I'm going to put my own fuel mix in here, which I know is 45 to one, premium fuel without ethanol and steel oil. Now I know for sure that the fuel won't be the problem if we have an issue again. All right, it's the moment of truth. The O26 with the decompression valve, the MS260 piston and cylinder. Let's see what happens. And choke, decompression valve, break on. pretty promising, isn't it? I flicked the uh, the switch way too high up there. I actually shut the engine off, but let's see if it starts now. I've got the decompression lever in. That is pretty awesome. It's so easy to start too. Decompression in, on position. Okay, let's try it without it, see how much effort it is, effort it is without. You can hear it lose the, the, uh, the compression there. So where I notice it is that first, that first lug over, as you can see, this saw is great compression here. But I notice it with that first that little snap part right there. So if you have the decompression lever in, it's just not there. Wow, isn't that something? Well, it doesn't get any easier than that, especially if you want to run something as awesome as an 026. Hopefully he likes it. There we have it guys, 026, steel with an MS-260 piston and cylinder and the advantages of the decompression lever. Now, I don't know if you could buy this saw previously with the decompression lever. It would make sense that Steel offered an 026 with that feature. Maybe you guys can comment and let me know below. Um, this saw is probably almost as old as I am. It would make sense that it was available because this plastic case on top, this cover, has that divot there for the decompression valve. So as it is right now, this 026 with the decompression valve is way easier to start than it was before. And you know, as time goes on, we all get older and things get harder to start. I hope that he enjoys the saw and it brings him many more years to come of cutting and starting ease. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below. I answer every comment, I appreciate it. Uh, and if you like the content that I'm putting out, Subscribe for me. Hit that thumbs up button. I'm loving making these videos. I'm having a blast doing it. It's a great hobby for me. So if you enjoyed it, show some support. I'll answer all your comments. Take care and I'll see you guys next time.